Today, we are going to embark on a journey through the United States of America. We're going to visit 10 of the most beautiful cities in this country, and we'll learn about their history, their impressive sights, and their rich gastronomy. These beautiful American cities, while not as old as cities in other parts of the world, still offer impressive experiences. So from Boston to San Francisco, and from Chicago to San Juan, welcome to the most beautiful cities in the USA. We will begin our tour with the oldest city in the United States. We find ourselves first in St. Augustine, located in Florida. Originally founded in 1565 by the Spanish explorer Pedro Menéndez de Aviles, St. Augustine was an important strategic city for Spain and became a significant commercial and cultural center. Throughout its history, St. Augustine was attacked and occupied by the British, the French, and the Americans, but despite that, it has always kept its Hispanic heritage alive. Nowadays, St. Augustine is a very popular tourist city. It still preserves some historic buildings such as the Castillo de San Marcos or the Cathedral Basilica of St. Augustine. So let's explore them in a bit more detail. The Castillo de San Marcos is a stone fortress built by the Spanish in the 17th century. As you can see, it has exceptionally thick walls and its ramparts, or its broad embankments used for protection, have a very low profile. The castle was built during a time when cannons could easily bring down the tall and thin walls of other castles. However, this type of exceptionally robust construction could withstand cannon bombardments quite easily. Another notable place is the Plaza de la Constitución, surrounded by historic buildings such as the Cathedral Basilica of St. Augustine, which was completed in 1797. Additionally, the city has a large number of museums, such as the Museum of St. Augustine History or the Government House Museum. It is also recommended to walk along St. George Street, a place with charming historic shops and restaurants. St. Augustine, of course, also offers a rich gastronomic culture that combines Spanish, American, and Caribbean flavors. Being located on the east coast of the country, the city has a wide variety of fresh seafood, including shrimp, fish, lobsters, oysters, and crabs. But something even more interesting is that among the typical dishes of Florida, there is this delicacy. What do they look like to you? Chicken nuggets? Well, they're not. These are alligator bites, a dish very similar to chicken fingers, but made with the meat of our reptilian friends. Our next stop is New York City, without a doubt one of the most famous, if not the most famous cities in all of the United States. Originally founded in 1624 by Dutch settlers, its first name was actually New Amsterdam, but the city came under British rule in 1664 and its name was changed to what it is today. In the 18th century, it became a significant port of entry for both African slaves and a center of maritime trade. It played a crucial role during the American Revolutionary War and in the 19th century, it became a powerful industrial city in the birthplace of the US labor movement. The city experienced an economic boom in the 20th century, becoming a major financial and cultural center for the country. The impressive skyscrapers that form its iconic skyline were built over this period. And more recently, the city has been the site of many historic events of the modern era, most notably the September 11th attacks. There are countless places to visit in New York from historical sites to modern tourist attractions. On the historical end, of course, we have the Statue of Liberty, which was a gift given by France in 1886. It symbolizes freedom and is an iconic part of the New York City skyline. 
Nearby is Ellis Island, the place where large steamships arrived in the early 20th century. Immigration inspections were arranged on this island, and a large number of European immigrants passed through these facilities, which have now been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Walking through New York City can be a highly stimulating experience. The city has a fast-paced rhythm and a vibrant energy, bustling with millions of people. As such, it is often called the city that never sleeps. The heart of the city is Manhattan Island, which is also the most densely populated area of the city. The architecture of New York can evoke a sense of awe and admiration. It has enormous and monumental buildings, including numerous skyscrapers. The Empire State Building is an iconic symbol of the city, offering breathtaking panoramic views. There are other equally famous buildings, such as the Chrysler Building, the Rockefeller Center, and the Flatiron Building, which is one of the city's first ever skyscrapers. Currently, the tallest building in the city is the One World Trade Center, located right next to the site where the Twin Towers once stood. Central Park is the famous urban park located directly in the heart of Manhattan, covering an area of over 340 hectares. The park was designed in 1857 as a green oasis for the expanding urban jungle of New York City. Today, Central Park serves as a place of rest, leisure, and relaxation for both New Yorkers and visitors alike. The park also has lakes, meadows, woodlands, and trails where many New Yorkers practice sports and other recreational activities. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, also known as the Met, is one of the largest museums in the world and houses an impressive collection of art and historical artifacts from around the globe. Additionally, the Guggenheim Museum is another major artistic center in the city, known for its distinctive architecture and contemporary art exhibitions. And next, we have Times Square, one of the most visited places in the world, with its massive billboards and bright lights illuminating the night. The Brooklyn Bridge, inaugurated in 1883, is an iconic landmark of the city that offers stunning views of the Manhattan skyline and the harbor. The American Museum of Natural History is a science and natural history museum that boasts an impressive collection of fossils from dinosaurs to marine species. You can also visit some of the stadiums of the city's sports teams, such as the Yankees or the Mets. After all that walking, you might want to grab something to eat. The city offers a wide range of gastronomic experiences, like the famous pizzerias in Brooklyn, the renowned hot dog street vendors, or the typical bakeries where you can find New York cheesecake, a dessert that is famous for its creamy and smooth texture. Moving further north, we find Boston, which was founded in 1630 by English Puritan colonists and became the most important city in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. During the 17th and 18th centuries, the city became a significant center of trade and politics in North America and was the site where the American Revolution was planned. The city was the scene of several key events in the struggle for American independence, such as the Boston Tea Party and the Boston Massacre. In Boston, there are many fascinating things to see. One of the city's most iconic attractions is the Freedom Trail, a red brick path that spans 16 historical sites, including the house of Paul Revere, one of the leaders of the independence movement. You can also visit the USS Constitution Museum, which was built in 1797, making it older than many cities in the United States. Exploring the interior of this wooden giant is a truly impressive experience. You can also visit Copley Square, where the Boston Public Library and Trinity Church are located. Likewise, you can explore the historic neighborhood of Beacon Hill, with its cobblestone streets 
and picturesque brick Georgian houses, which I'm sure could withstand tornadoes much better than the wooden houses of the Great Plains. Other notable sites are the bustling Quincy Market, the Museum of Fine Arts, and Fenway Park, the stadium of the Red Sox baseball team. In Boston, of course, the food is delicious, especially when it comes to seafood. One of the most popular dishes is the lobster roll, which consists of fresh lobster meat served in a hot dog bun. It's also very common to find the famous clam chowder, a thick and creamy soup, and a clam bake, a mixture of clams, lobsters, potatoes, and corn cooked in a pot. Another notable treat is the delicious and decadent Boston cream pie, a vanilla cake filled with cream and covered in delicious smooth chocolate. Next, we move back south to Charleston, which was founded in 1670 as the capital of the British colony of South Carolina. The city grew rapidly due to its strategic location on the Ashley River port, which facilitated the trade of key products of the time, such as rice, cotton, and unfortunately, slaves. During the American Revolution, Charleston was the site of significant battles and was sometimes occupied by the British. However, after independence, the city became an important economic and cultural center. Due to its location in the American South, in the 1800s, Charleston found itself in the heart of the American Civil War, as well as in the 20th century amidst historic movements for civil rights and racial justice. Charleston is a city rich in history and heritage, and there are many places to visit. King Street is a main thoroughfare in the city, lined with a variety of shops and restaurants. The Charleston City Market is a covered market with numerous vendors offering local products and crafts. The Cathedral of St. John the Baptist is a Roman Catholic church known for its impressive architecture and rich Catholic heritage. The Battery is a waterfront promenade at the southern tip of the Charleston Peninsula. It offers views of the bay and an impressive display of historic houses. These houses, built in an elegant southern style, are undoubtedly one of the most beautiful attractions in Charleston. Made of wood, they feature elegant porches, delicate latticework, and are painted in a variety of gorgeous colors. Together, they create truly charming neighborhoods. Additionally, there are some historic houses that can be visited, such as the Hayward Washington House and the Nathaniel Russell House. In Charleston's Bay, you can also visit the USS Yorktown Museum, an impressive aircraft carrier with over 80 years of history on display. Charleston is known for its southern and coastal cuisine, offering a wide variety of seafood and other traditional dishes. One of the most typical dishes of Charleston is the classic shrimp and grits, a dish consisting of shrimp sautéed in butter and garlic served over a bed of creamy corn grits. Other popular seafood options include she crab soup, a creamy soup made with female crab, and the low country boil, a mixture of shrimp, sausages, corn, and boiled potatoes. For something sweeter, the city is also known for its waffles. Founded in 1682 by William Penn, our next stop, Philadelphia, is one of the oldest cities in the United States and played a significant role in the American Revolution. It served as the seat of the First and Second Continental Congresses, where the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776 and the United States Constitution was drafted in 1787. During the 19th century, Philadelphia became an industrial and commercial center and hosted leaders of the abolitionist and progressive reform movements. Today, it's a vibrant city located halfway between New York and Washington, D.C. In the city, we can visit places like Society Hill, a neighborhood located in the city center, 
famous for its beautiful and historic colonial houses. This neighborhood is one of the oldest in the city and was home to many of the founding fathers of the United States, including Benjamin Franklin and Robert Morris, two of the most prominent leaders of the American independence movement. Independence Hall is a gorgeous historic building where the Declaration of Independence was signed. The city is also home to the Liberty Bell, an iconic cracked bell that has become a symbol of American independence as it was rung to summon the Continental Congresses and to gather people to read the Declaration of Independence. Lastly, we cannot forget to replenish our energy because Philadelphia also has its gastronomic wonders such as the world-renowned Philly cheesesteak, a sandwich made with thinly sliced steak cooked with onions, peppers, and melted cheese. Or on the sweeter end, we have the Dutch apple pie, topped with a delicious, crispy crust. Heading to the deep south of the country, New Orleans was founded in 1718 by French explorer Jean-Baptiste de Lemoine. The city was named in honor of the region of France, Philip II, Duke of Orleans. The city quickly grew as an important commercial port due to its location near the mouth of the Mississippi River, a major river that served as a communication hub for the Great Plains region. During the 18th century, the city was ruled by France and Spain before the entire Louisiana Territory was sold to the United States in 1803. New Orleans is known for its rich history and culture, especially its architecture, jazz, and famous carnival, Mardi Gras. The French Quarter, also known as the Vieux Carré, is one of the most popular tourist attractions in New Orleans. It is the oldest neighborhood in the city, and it's located directly in the heart of the historic downtown. The neighborhood is characterized by its brightly colored colonial buildings, its wrought iron balconies, and hidden courtyards with beautiful fountains and gardens. Additionally, Bourbon Street is known for its vibrant nightlife, bars, and restaurants, where you can enjoy the traditional New Orleans cuisine. In the historic downtown area, you'll also find the St. Louis Cathedral in Jackson Square, two iconic locations of the city. What you might not know is that the cemeteries of New Orleans are also unique and beautiful. They are known as the Cities of the Dead due to their intricate network of tombs and crypts. One of the most famous cemeteries is St. Louis Cemetery No. 1, founded in 1789 and the oldest in the city. The tombs are located in raised crypts and mausoleums intricately decorated with sculptures and ornaments. Another notable cemetery is Lafayette Cemetery No. 1, known for its beautiful tombs and funerary monuments. The National World War II Museum is dedicated to preserving and exhibiting the history of the United States' involvement in World War II. It was inaugurated in 2000 and boasts an impressive collection of historical artifacts, documents, and photographs that provide a detailed insight into life during the war. The museum also features numerous interactive exhibits, including a 4D cinema that allows visitors to experience the war from a truly unique perspective. And we can't forget New Orleans is perhaps most notably renowned for its rich and diverse cuisine, which combines African, French, Spanish, and Creole influences. Some of the city's typical dishes include gumbo, a thick soup with seafood, chicken, andouille sausage, and rice, and jambalaya, a rice dish with seafood and smoked meats, po'boy sandwiches, which are filled with seafood or meats served on French bread, and beignets, deep-fried pastry fritters dusted with powdered sugar. Sticking in the south, Savannah is another historic city located in southeastern Georgia. It was founded in 1733 by General James Edward Oglethorpe as the first capital of the Georgia colony. 
During the American Civil War, the region was the scene of several battles and experienced significant damage. However, much of the city's historic architecture has been carefully preserved and restored, making it a beautiful tourist destination today. There are many reasons why Savannah is considered a beautiful city. Firstly, its historic architecture is impressive with beautiful colonial houses, villas, and public buildings that have been meticulously preserved. Additionally, the city is full of tree-lined squares and beautiful parks. Gardens and fountains add a special touch to the already charming city. The cobblestone streets and nighttime illumination of the city also contribute to its unique beauty. The humid and mild climate causes the growth of large trees draped with dense curtains of Spanish moss, creating uniquely beautiful natural scenes. In the city center is the Savannah Historic District, where most of the colonial houses are located. They're characterized by their vibrant colors and Southern style. Here, you will also find the famous Forsyth Park, the main green area of Savannah. It is also well worth taking a stroll along River Street, a pedestrian street next to the Savannah River, which is filled with shops, restaurants, and bars. Just outside the city is the Bonaventure Cemetery, a historic cemetery with interesting tombstones, monuments, and of course, lush vegetation. Additionally, there is a historic plantation with a majestic avenue of oak trees called the Wormslow Historic Site. Lastly, the Savannah River, which flows alongside the city, empties into the sea in a marshy area called the Wausau National Wildlife Refuge. This is a natural reserve with sand dunes, coastal forests, and shallow areas creating a crucial ecosystem for marine life. And now, after getting to know the town, it's finally time to eat something. Much like Charleston, Savannah is known for its delicious southern cuisine, such as shrimp and grits or the Lowcountry Boil. But for something a little less marine, there is of course the famous southern-style fried chicken, with an outer layer of crispy breading coating the juicy and tender meat inside. For our next stop, we have to head thousands of miles west, where we can find San Francisco. Founded in 1776 by Spanish missionaries, it became an important city during the gold rush in the 1840s. It experienced significant growth during the 19th century, but unfortunately was struck by the Great Earthquake of 1906, which caused unprecedented destruction and devastation. Most of the city's buildings were destroyed or damaged, and subsequent fires worsened the situation. It's estimated that between 3,000 and 6,000 people died, and much of the city was left in ruins. However, the city quickly recovered, and new buildings and neighborhoods were built in their place. In the 1950s, it became the center of beat culture in America. And in 1967, San Francisco was the epicenter of the hippie movement, and the Summer of Love was celebrated in the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood. In 1989, the city was hit by another devastating earthquake that caused significant damage, although much less severe than the early 20th century earthquake, due to improvements in safety and building codes. San Francisco has several historic neighborhoods containing some of the oldest and most important buildings in the city. The Jackson Square Historic District is one of the oldest of the city and includes notable buildings such as the Mission San Francisco de Assis and the former Hibernia Bank Building. The Alamo Square Historic District is famous for its painted Victorian houses known as the Painted Ladies. And the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood, which was the epicenter of the 1960s hippie movement, is also considered a historic district. San Francisco is a coastal city, and right by the sea is Fisherman's Wharf, a popular tourist area with shops, restaurants, attractions like the Aquarium of the Bay, and... Wait a minute, what is this? 
What are all these sea lions doing lounging around here? What are they waiting for? Oh, now I understand. They're waiting for you to like, subscribe, and click the notification button. And it's not just me asking. This adorable sea lion is also asking for it. If you liked and subscribed, thank you so much. During the 19th century, the west of the United States experienced a significant influx of Chinese immigrants. So a neighborhood called Chinatown appeared in San Francisco. Today, the neighborhood still has a large Chinese population, but is particularly famous for its shops and wide variety of restaurants offering authentic Asian cuisine. Lombard Street is another iconic landmark famous for its winding curves and beautiful floral decoration, making it one of the most picturesque streets in the entire city. And while it is beautiful, it actually has that many curves not just for aesthetics, but because it's the steepest street in the city, and it would be almost impossible to go up or down if the road was straight. And, speaking of the steep streets, the city is iconic for its cable cars, the famous San Francisco trams. Although they may appear to be conventional trams, they are not. To safely navigate the steep streets, the cable cars are propelled by being connected to a hidden cable system that runs along the central rail. There are several stations that move the cables using large machinery, allowing these beautiful and small trams to travel around the city without even worrying about the steep hills. But after all that climbing and descending, you surely must be hungry. So we can delight ourselves with typical dishes such as Gioppino, an Italian fish stew made with a variety of seafood and tomatoes, which has become a signature dish of San Francisco. Or perhaps a delicious Dungeness crab, or sourdough bread, a traditional bread from the San Francisco Bay Area. But, but wait, wait, do you see that bread? That's real bread. And in this channel, we reject modern trends, and we embrace traditions. Back to the east of the country, we find Washington, D.C., which is the capital of the United States. The city is named after the first president of the United States, George Washington, and DC stands for District of Columbia, since it's a part of a small federal district of Columbia. The city of Washington, DC was founded in 1791, and the United States Congress passed a law to create a new territory that would serve as the country's capital. President George Washington selected the location where the city would be built. Construction began in 1791, and the city was named in honor of this president. Originally, the city was designed with a grid-like street plan, and much of the city's architecture and public buildings were designed in the neoclassical style. While the capital may not compete in beauty with other capitals of the world, it certainly has iconic and very interesting places that we're going to visit right now. The National Mall is a large urban park that is home to many of the city's most famous monuments and museums, such as the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and the Martin Luther King Memorial. There are several museums of the Smithsonian Institution on the National Mall, and all of them are free to the public. One of the most popular is the National Air and Space Museum. It has one of the largest collections of aircrafts and spacecrafts in the whole world. Visitors can see the Wright Brothers' original plane, the Apollo 11 command module, and the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, one of the fastest planes ever flown. There are also numerous exhibitions on the history of aviation and space exploration. The National Museum of Natural History is also stunning. This museum features an impressive collection of animal specimens, plants, rocks, and minerals from around the world, 
including dinosaur fossils as impressive as these. The National Museum of American History has a large collection of historical objects related to the history of the United States, such as the John Bull steam locomotive and some historic flags. It also has exhibitions on the history of American pop culture, technology, and science. Very close by is the White House, which is the official residence of the President of the United States. Visitors can take a guided tour of the White House gardens, but it's quite difficult to get tickets to this. Also nearby is the Capitol Building, which is the building that houses both the Senate and the House of Representatives in the United States Congress. The building is characterized by its enormous but gorgeous dome. Visitors can take guided tours to learn about the history and the functioning of Congress. Finally, to refuel and get some energy, while walking the sprawling avenues of the city, you can grab a half smoke, which is a hot dog with a type of smoked sausage seasoned with spices that originate in the DC area. And now to the Midwest. Chicago is the largest city in the state of Illinois. Since its founding, it has undergone significant progress to become one of the most important cities in the country. It was founded in 1833 on the shore of the Chicago River. Its strategic position near the Great Lakes allowed for rapid growth in both industry and commerce. However, at the time of its founding, Chicago faced a major problem. The city had been built on a very flat area, barely a few centimeters above lake level. This made it impossible to construct sewers since the wastewater wouldn't flow towards the lake. After several cholera outbreaks, a bold plan emerged. They would raise the entire city by two meters to create a sewage system that could drain outside the city. But how do you lift a city by two whole meters? Well, it's easy to say, but not easy to do. First, they dug under the buildings, then placed large wooden beams, and beneath the beams, they inserted hydraulic jacks. Hundreds of workers began pumping the jacks, gradually lifting the building. Afterwards, the gap was filled with stone and soil, the sewers were built, and the new streets were paved two meters higher than they were before. Over the course of several years, building by building, the city of Chicago was raised until the task was completed and the city had its own new sewer system. American engineering had been a success. This ingenious system of lifting houses even allowed for the relocation of some houses. This, of course, is still done today, but with more modern methods. However, less than 10 years later in 1871, the city suffered a major fire that destroyed a large portion of the city, undoing much of the effort. But the fire was not the end of Chicago, but rather a new beginning. The reconstruction allowed for the construction of taller and more modern buildings. They used less wood and more non-flammable materials such as brick and steel. This is how the city became a center for the transportation industry, thanks in part to the railroad in the Illinois and Mississippi Canal. During World War I, the city experienced a significant boom in the manufacturing industry, which increased the population and the wealth of the city. It turned into a metropolis with towering skyscrapers, competing in grandeur with New York City. During World War II, the city made significant contributions to wartime production, and after the war, it experienced another great industrial boom, becoming one of the most important industrial cities in the country. If you didn't know, Chicago is located in the heart of the Rust Belt, the most powerful industrial region in the country. By the way, if you want to learn more interesting things about the United States, such as what the Rust Belt and the Bible Belt are, or many other things about American geography, we have another very interesting video about that topic. 
and you can find that link at the end of the video. The impressive architecture of Chicago is one of its main attractions. Some of the tallest and most iconic buildings in all of the United States can be found there, such as the John Hancock Center or the Willis Tower. The Willis Tower was formerly known as the Sears Tower and is the third largest tower in North America. It offers breathtaking views of the city. You can go up to the observation deck on the 103rd floor to enjoy panoramic views of Chicago on a... Uh, uh, on a... on a glass floor? You can also take a stroll in Millennium Park, a beautiful green area that features a sculpture named Cloud Gate, but is better known as The Bean. And you know what? I would actually prefer it if they painted it brown and made it look like a real giant bean. The most commercial street is the Magnificent Mile. It is a street with renowned brand stores and high-end restaurants. It's a perfect place for shopping or enjoying Chicago's nightlife. The city also has two impressive museums, the Art Institute of Chicago, with an incredible collection of art from all around the world, and the Museum of Science and Industry, which features an impressive display of technological wonders. Additionally, the city boasts an impressive lake shore on Lake Michigan, where the Navy Pier is located. This one kilometer long pier is a popular spot for tourists and locals alike, offering a wide variety of attractions. Whew. After all this visiting, I'm starting to feel hungry again. In Chicago, we can enjoy a typical Italian beef sandwich, which has thinly sliced and marinated beef served on, you guessed it, real bread. And, how could I forget about Chicago-style pizza? People also commonly call it deep dish pizza. Sure, Italians might consider it sacrilegious and shed tears of anger, but I have to say, I think it's pretty good. It's characterized by its thick and crispy crust, robust tomato sauce, and a generous serving of cheese. But enough with the lakes, now we'll head out to the desert where we find Las Vegas, a city located in the state of Nevada. The city of Las Vegas was officially founded on May 15, 1905, although the area had already been inhabited by indigenous tribes and explored by Spanish explorers in the past. Originally, Las Vegas was a small and sparsely populated city but its strategic location in the middle of the Nevada desert and the construction of the Hoover Dam in the 1930s contributed to its growth. Eventually, Nevada's permissive gambling laws transformed it into a major tourist and entertainment center. Currently, Las Vegas is one of the most visited and well-known cities in the whole world. The main attractions of Las Vegas are, of course, its casinos, which offer a wide variety of gambling games such as slot machines, poker tables, blackjack, roulette, and much more. The hotels and resorts are also a significant attraction, with many thematic options like Venice, Paris, New York, or Egypt. Many of these hotels also feature pools, spas, golf courses, and other luxury amenities for its visitors. Now, personally, all of this seems a bit tacky to me, a little too kitsch, an imitation lacking personality. It's a festival of the obscene, the extravagant, and the tacky. But I have to admit that when everything is so tremendously over the top, it starts to have a certain charm to it. And well, since many people find it beautiful, 
we decided to include it on the list. Shows and performances are another major attraction in Las Vegas, with performances by famous artists and comedians, acrobatic shows, magic acts, music, and more. Casinos and hotels also often have free shows such as dancing water fountains, light and sound shows, and others. Additionally, Las Vegas is known for its nightlife, with bars, nightclubs, and clubs that stay open all night and offer live music and entertainment. On this channel, we don't endorse gambling, as gambling essentially means extracting incomes from the working class. Because, let's be crystal clear here, no one ever really got rich in the casino, but so many go bankrupt. For me, the best part of the city is not the casinos, but rather the stunning natural landscapes located around it, including the Grand Canyon, Lake Mead, and Red Rock Canyon National Park. But before saying goodbye to Las Vegas, let's try something terrible and decadent, like dirty corn. This food consists of an ear of corn covered in butter, lime-infused mayonnaise, hot Cheetos powder, melted cheese, and cilantro. It's truly a hypercaloric bomb that probably packs nearly 2,000 calories. Finally, we head south and we arrive at our 10th city, but certainly not the least beautiful. This city is San Juan, Puerto Rico's capital city. It is one of the oldest and most picturesque cities in the Caribbean. It was founded in 1521 by the Spanish conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon, and it is even older than St. Augustine. However, the reason it's not considered the oldest city in the United States is because Puerto Rico has the status of a free associated state. Basically, it's a pseudo-colonial status that prevents its citizens from having the same rights and obligations as inhabitants of the rest of the United States. But getting back to San Juan itself, the city was under Spanish rule for nearly 400 years and witnessed numerous historical events, including a lot of pirate attacks, until it was finally conquered by the United States in 1898. Thanks to this long history under Spanish control, San Juan has a rich colonial architecture, which is particularly prominent in Old San Juan, the historic center of the city. It is one of the most iconic places in San Juan and a definite must visit if you're on the island. Old San Juan is known for its beautiful cobblestone streets, pastel-colored historic buildings, lively squares, and ocean views. Here you will find many shops, restaurants, and vibrant streets filled with people. In the center is the Cathedral of San Juan Bautista, a Baroque-style structure that is one of the oldest religious buildings in all of the Americas. The Parque de las Palomas is a small park located in Old San Juan where you can enjoy beautiful views of the ocean. And the Plaza de Armas is the heart of Old San Juan. Here you will find a beautiful fountain, benches to rest, and historic buildings surrounding the square. The Plaza de Armas is a popular place for events and festivals in the city. Given that San Juan was a strategic Spanish city in the Caribbean, it needed to be protected from attacks by English privateers and pirates, so two powerful fortresses were built to protect it. The Castillo de San Felipe del Moro, also known as El Moro, is a 16th century fortress located at the entrance of the port of San Juan. This impressive fort is one of the most visited historical sites in the city. And there is also Castillo de San Cristobal, another 17th century fortress built to protect the city from land attacks. Finally, let's conclude with some San Juan delicacies. The cuisine of San Juan is a unique blend of African, Spanish, and Caribbean influences. Here you can taste the mofongo, a typical dish of Puerto Rico made with fried and mashed green plantains, garlic, and pork cracklings. Also, there is arroz con gandules, which is a dish of sautéed rice with pigeon peas and pork. 
you can also enjoy the alcapurrias, consisting of banana fritters filled with meat, seafood, or vegetables, deeply fried in hot oil. Oh, <sighs> well, after all this, our journey through some of the most beautiful cities in the United States has to come to an end. Certainly, not all of the beautiful cities are included, but this is the selection of the ones that we personally like the most. If you believe there are other cities we should know about, please let us know in the comments. And now that we're done, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell. If you want to learn more, I recommend watching some of the following videos on our channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.